All right, what's up in the loop? It's Hyde. We're coming at you from Black Pool Pleasure Beach. Uh, really cool entrance here. You got like the Noah's Ark, all the Noah's Ark characters. Um, but enough talking. Let's go in and check out this awesome park. All right, here's a ride you don't see every day. It's always cool to come to a park and see something uh, completely different. Yeah, you got this awesome swing ride. Man, those, those cars hold a, a lot of people. But uh, this is like the main entrance way to uh, Blackpool. Um, and you kind of come in and like the big ones right here. So uh, really cool. All right, so the story goes about this Alice in Wonderland ride that uh, Walt Disney and um, the Thompson family were uh, good friends. And uh, they, they talked, um, I'm sure you're going to correct me in the comments of exactly how the conversation went, but uh, this was very, very much inspired by the one at Disney. Brian, haven't seen you since Dubai. How have you been, man? <laughs> And those I'm Dubai good. videos are still coming out on the channel, yeah, so it, they make no sense. Uh, but uh, you've been on this, you go to Disneyland like every three days. It's true. Um, how does it compare? Um, it's what I imagine old Fantasyland to Disneyland to be like. Super weird, like black light, kind of like janky animatronics. Um, but it's, it's incredibly charming. My favorite part about this is that they play uh, a clip of like Pure Imagination from Willy Wonka. Oh, a little cross cross breeding of uh, characters and, here, and they just play that song on a loop in there. No Alice in Wonderland music. Huh? Here we have Avalanche, uh, one of the toboggan uh, style coasters here. But what it is, it's uh, pretty good. It got it gets kind of wild. They're jumping right into the turns there. Uh, it's just really cool because uh, it's in the middle of the park. So one of our first rides here going on this uh, kind of put in perspective of what the whole park looks like. Here's one of the mini self-operated rides here. That you just like stand in, put the change in, and then you get the flying saucer around the area here. So this ride is built for single riders only. Like, is this not the most interesting, kind of sad looking ride you've ever seen? Yeah. All right, the main attraction. Oh, perfect timing with Icon going over there. Here is the big one running one train. So if you want to walk up that lift, you can go through this door here and be escorted to the top. 420 steps, 235 feet. We've looked into it before, uh, before coming over, uh, but apparently uh, it sells out super, super far in advance. Uh, several months in advance. So take a look at that, but man, the views up there have to be killer. So the ride, you know, the ride's super famous, uh, you know, at least for me, from being in the world's greatest roller coasters in 3D from back in the early or late 90s. So super excited to ride a big one. Um, but it really doesn't do that much. The view, you can kind of see the view from here. It is killer. One of the best views on a roller coaster. Ironically, kind of right up there with Magnum. But the ride, it's kind of like a giant mine train, just kind of meanders around. Um, not as rough as some people made it out to be. Uh, I sat in 1-3, which is kind of like the magic uh, arrow seat. So I did get a couple pops of air time, like right there, and coming up on the block break. But like I said, the views are what make this coaster. Yeah, you know you're not in the US anymore when there's no air gates. This is uh, Revolution, uh, the Aero Shuttle Loop, one of only a few left in the world. Um, you know, you gotta like it for its beauty. but overall, uh, it's not a very good ride. It's like any Aero Looper from back in the day, so not the uh, not the best of rides out there, but unique uh, for what it is. It's kind of cool how it's sandwiched in the middle of this park. Another, yeah, we could take the train, self-operated train that goes down to that little uh, hut down there or fake station comes back a little self-operated that is pretty cool so why don't you do a kind of a midday check-in here uh, you know kind of first impressions after a few rides and this park's really cool it, it's small um, one of the guys we were with said ah oh, I looked at the map it uh, looks like we shouldn't have to be there too long it's uh, pretty small I said ah it fools you because there's rides everywhere like they fit this tiny little log flume here. Like, that's the entire log flume right there. Uh, 
they fit so much into a small space here that don't don't let the look side deceive you this is actually quite a big park here with a lot of rides um, a lot of dark rides lots of coasters depending on how you count between 10 and 13 um, but overall really enjoying this park uh, a lot of like hidden little pathways here like you have this like like is that a, at the ride exit no that's just how to get over one of the rides to another area of the park all right so i know all you coaster boys out there are going to be like but it's a bnm track uh still this is super cool to see uh, a coaster dynamics model um made for infusion so i let them pass on it it's not the right kind of track for the uh, pure coolness factor it looks like it was attached uh, it has a motor attached so at one point it probably did run but pretty cool if you want to know what a bnm version of slc looks like there you go So that's pretty cool. You come face to face with this wall of water right there. So I have to say, I heard a lot of bad things about this ride. And uh, using the Speedy Fast, we were able to sit in the front row, which I think is probably a lifesaver because uh, the ride wasn't that bad. Like probably one of the better SLCs I've been on. Uh, and you know, the water effects are pretty cool. We got hit with like a little bit of water here and there, but um, pretty neat to, you know, for a ride that's cloned so much to kind of see it in a, a different setting over water like this and uh, close proximity to other rides. Pretty cool. Plus great views of the big one from the, the exit line here. I'll let you guess what ride we're going on here. That's one awesome side. That's actually the turnaround coming off the lift hill that they incorporated into the giant sign for the ride. That is really cool. In addition to the sign, Big Dipper might have one of the coolest stations out there. There's a fountain in the station. That's pretty cool. With the Speedy Pass, we're literally like, they didn't create like a separate queue for it. They were just like, walk under the structure. I guess when the ride's so old, it's not really uh, designed for speedy fast, but uh, yeah, we're like walking by the mechanical and there it goes. Starts off with uh, with the tunnel and a little tribute to Rix Rodriguez, the guy who has uh, marathoned quite a few rides here at Blackpool. So yes, this park's so on top of each other. I'm filming the review for the Big Dipper from the line of Icon, because this is probably the best spot you've got. Oh, perfect timing too. Way to distract from my review icon. Um, so it's really unique, like out and back layout with like this like roller coaster tycoon style first of hill. Um, the roundabout turn uh, by the um, by the people chase is really unique as well. All right, so they have a Wallace and Gromit ride here. Uh, due to time, I'm not running, but Brian, as lovely girlfriend Natalie. Uh, our big Wallace and Gromit fans, so they're gonna give us a review right now. It was a really cute ride. It was sweet, it had all the scenes from all the different shorts, um, and it was well executed. There's a part where you're like over the countryside, so it has like a very Peter Pan feel. Oh, from, nice. Uh, from Disney. Uh, but yeah, if you like the series, you'd love it. It's really sweet and well done. So you might see Nickelodeon stream go, oh, that must be a newer ride. Uh, it is actually one of the park's oldest rides used to be called a velvet coaster because it had velvet seats, believe it or not. Now it's painted at slime lime green and themed to Nickelodeon. But you can see it kind of goes around the whole back area of the Nickelodeon uh, area. Standard out and back uh, wooden coaster um, with four bench. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think those are PTCs. Let me know in the comments, but uh, we're going to go check this out. Really cool uh, station here. Kind of art deco. Uh, we would love to see what this was, uh, how it looked before uh, the Nickelodeon retheme. And not every day you see a orange track color wooden roller coaster. I stand corrected. They do have velvet seats. Pretty cozy. Not a bad ride. The Nickelodeon area is uh, surprisingly well done. You have uh, like this uh, Rugrats uh, themed ride here. 
you know, for a regional park, it has the regional park kind of level of theme you'd expect, just a couple little statues and uh, and some fun signs. But uh, overall, pretty pretty well done. Uh, Nickelodeon area, Krusty Krab, order up uh, a mini drop tower. That's pretty cool. We went from the orange streak back there to the blue streak. No, actually, it's called Blue Fire. Blue Flyer, not Blue, blue Fire, like the, the Mac coaster. Uh, a more cushy seats on this ride, so uh, we're gonna go enjoy that. And yep, the coolest thing about this ride might be the fact that they use the old school hand brakes. Well, that and the cushy seats. As you can see, Blue Flyer is uh, fairly small. That's one of the one of the bigger hills right there, right next to Orange, Nickelodeon Orange, which is about the size of like Blue Streak at Cedar Point if you need reference. Not nearly as much airtime. Um, the blue one does go through a tunnel in the in the mountain over there, so that's pretty cool. Just interesting to see blue and orange wooden roller coasters next to each other. They have, I guess, the cousin of uh, Laughing Sail. Laughing Man. The park is filled with these like not suitable for wheelchairs uh, kind of ramps here. It, it just lends to the whole, uh, what would you say, the old roller coaster tycoon feel of the park. Um, also, there is this uh, monorail, monorail track you can see there. Kind of goes up here. Like 80% of the monorail track is complete, but the ride clearly doesn't run because 20% is missing. Next up is the super unique people chase ride. Kind of throw back to the old uh, Coney Island ride. You actually ride on a horse with two people uh, strapped in somewhat securely and uh, kind of go around. You go around one, uh, two, three, four, five coasters, I think. You're, um, and pretty interesting ride. There, uh, there's three sides, they're only running two, and it's arguable, you know. It's up to you if you want to count in three rides or uh, one for the old uh, coaster count. A cool ride nonetheless. It's the weekend of the Kentucky Derby and while Vacoma might have won, lost yesterday, Arrow won today. But really, that was an awesome, awesome ride. Hopefully SNS can uh, sell a few uh, more like it. Really unique, really fun. Walking up to Icon here, there's a pretty, pretty sweet looking sign here. And uh, epic uh, music, which you can download on iTunes. The soundtrack is available now on iTunes. And no, they didn't pay me to say that. Cool uh, queue here. I really like how the queue is right up against the launch track here. So I got that was uh, a lot better than I expected, you know, and not to say I've ever judged a ride off a of POV, but the POV came out and some of the first reactions it was that it was a little slower. I did not find that to be the case. The launches aren't super powerful, but smooth ride, great airtime, and love the interactive elements with the other rides. The cart ride here is awesome. Not only does it have this like go-kart style, like ramp up, ramp down, but it literally goes all over, like all the way down there to big one, circles around. One thing, uh, one of the downsides to Blackpool, they're only running one train on most of the most of the coasters, uh, except Icon. Icon, they were doing a really great job pushing uh, through at least three trains and super fast dispatches. Which leads me to my next point, the Speedy Pass. It is a great deal. There's three tiers. Um, put them up on the screen now because I can't remember the price, but um, you know, start, starting as far as low as 15 to be able to book some queues while uh, waiting on other rides, highly recommend it. The big one running one train had like a 75 minute wait while a lot of the other stuff was walk on, so we didn't use it super much, but we're just being able to cut the line on the big one and like infusion, super well worth it. So we didn't quite know what to expect. The river caves says tunnel of love. And uh, similar to like the old school tunnel of loves, you 
um, that you know you find throughout some of the older style parks. You get in a boat and you go through a lot of tunnels. But the really cool thing about this uh, is there were, there were some neat sets. I mean, nothing elaborate, but for what it was, there was like some two-story room sets. The ending with like Agner Watts, uh, however you say that in Cambodia. I apologize. Uh, really cool, uh, like really big set. So a fun little ride. You know, if you're worried about getting wet, that is the only drop on the ride. Surprisingly, it does create a little bit of a splash, but uh, nothing more than a little sprinkle on you. So don't uh, don't pass up this uh, really cool uh, um, old school water dark ride for fear of getting wet because um, you didn't get that much wet. So Grand National here uh, is uh, the racing coaster, the Mobius Strip racing coaster, which means you start on this side and then you end up on the other side there. Now it's really hard to get a good photo of because it's a true roller coaster type food fashion. It starts out here, one end of the park, literally up against the end of the park. Cuts underneath here, you can kind of see where the plexiglass is. The majority of the ride, or the lift hill, is on the back side of the park. Standard like figure eight old school. We sat on a wheel seat, so it was a little rough, but uh, still tons of fun. A lot of, really cool. Gotta get both sides to get that credit too. All right, go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is one of three derby racers ride playland Cedar Point. This might be the coolest one with that like disco ball horse in the middle there. You gotta ride the derby races, they're so much fun. Don't, let, don't think it's a carousel, they're a lot of fun to ride. Ah, Valhalla. A lot of people love it or hate it. I, a lot of people, you know, say, you know, when all the effects are working, it's one of the better rides, very dark rides out there. But it's known for getting you absolutely soaked. And we took a look at it and people are like coming out with like soaked shoes. And as much as I would like to ride this, uh, 40 degrees today, like mid 40s, just not doing it. I don't want to walk around with soaked shoes. Good reason to come back because it's supposed to be awesome. It sounds pretty cool. All right, so I am here right before my wedding. Um, I have time to get like some big one ride parts and tell the uh, soon to be wife, yeah, sorry, we're over the weight limit uh, on our luggage because I'm taking home a, a chain link part. But like, that is the big one tow bar. No idea what that means. Uh, but yeah, if you want random pieces of rides, including seatbelts, uh, chain link dogs over here, uh, steeplechase chain link dog. That is heavy, that is really heavy. Um, and that is going to set you back a cool, uh, there's no price tag, but probably expensive. Uh, actually, they're not that bad. Wild mouse pieces, which is neat because the ride's gone. 50 uh, pounds, obviously, more expensive, more, more lucrative. The park did a really great job of having non like super nerdy uh, merchandise. Like this really like simple Grand National polo shirt, this big one hoodie. And then of course they had all your standard, you know, tchotchkes and, and theme park flair. But one of the highlights was some of these 3D roller coaster models here. And now yes, that price is correct that the models started at 80 pounds, just under 100 US dollars. But the PTC car there, I picked that one up. Really, really awesome. Uh, lots of great detail on it. You got the Valhalla boat, the rocket ship. Another awesome thing was this blueprint. This was like 30 pounds, I believe, of the big one. But it had all the other rides on there. You can just see how intricate it is. And then they also had one little bit similar for Icon. So, you know, not unique merch that you don't see every day at all the parks. So that about wraps up our day at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And the first thing I have to say is how much time you think you need here, add a couple more hours. There's, don't let the, the size of the park fool you. Like I mentioned earlier, there is rides everywhere. So many dark rides, so many coasters. A lot of the dark rides obviously don't have the greatest capacity. So we had to skip a few of them. because They're not on all of them. A lot of them are on the speedy pass, but not all of them. Uh, you got the old school Noah's Ark here. Uh, just like uh, Kennywood, but I don't believe this one's open anymore. Uh, but overall, love this park. Speaking of Kennywood, I should have made that segue better there, but speaking of Kennywood, this very much feels like the Kennywood of uh, the UK. Uh, perfect time, here comes the big one. You know, in the sense that there is some really classic old school wooden roller coasters that are a lot of fun, a lot of unique rides. 
mixed right in with some high speed thrills like Icon. Icon, big surprise. You know, the big one there, that's kind of what everyone knows about this park and the views are what makes it. But yeah, definitely uh, definitely come and check out Blackpool if you're in uh, the UK. I would definitely, there's, I know a million parks here in the UK and in Europe, but definitely make this one a priority. So hope you enjoyed that look. Be sure to subscribe, like, you know, we got a lot more stuff coming from uh, from Europe here, uh, a lot more videos throughout the summer, um, many great European parks, so stay tuned.